Hello, and welcome to another issue of The Numbers of Thoth. Brought to you today by Martin and Julia Herdman. Today we're taking an in-depth look at Middle Kingdom coffins. Our kicking off point for this investigation is the coffin of Kanumnukt, which is now on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. This amazingly preserved wooden coffin, was most probably discovered by the early 20th century Egyptologist, Ahmed Bey Kamal, at the cemetery site of Maya. Kamal worked at the Maya cemetery site, in the 14th Nome of Upper Egypt, from April 1910, returning in subsequent seasons until 1914. The cemetery at Maya consists of five groups of tombs covering an area of approximately 1.5 kilometers, running from north to south. Groups A, D, and E, date from the 6th to the 11th dynasty. Groups B, and C, consist of mainly 12th dynasty burials. The New Kingdom tombs are believed to be on the east bank of the Nile. Ahmed Bey Kamal concentrated on the shaft tombs in all five cemeteries. He made lists of the tomb owners, and the objects recovered from each tomb, but the exact locations and dispositions of objects within the tomb were not recorded. As was the case with many of the early excavations in Egypt, Kamal's expedition was more focused on recovering high-quality museum exhibits than scientific research. The cemetery at Maya is the burial place of the gnome princes, their families, and servants, and the local mayors and priests of Qi. The Old and Middle Kingdom tombs at Maya became a rich source of archaeological material at the beginning of the 20th century, and many of the finds can now be found in the world's major museums. The coffin of Kanumnukt was sold to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, in 1915. Unfortunately, we know little about Kanumnukt the owner of this splendid coffin, other than his name. But, to have such a highly decorated casket, he must have been a high-ranking official. His coffin is a beautiful example of a Middle Kingdom elite casket. The standard offering formula is painted above the pair of wadjet eyes. The small, or false, door under the wadjet eyes is thought to be where the deceased's bar or soul could enter or leave a burial place. The rest of the exterior is inscribed with invocations to the primeval deities, particularly those associated with death and rebirth, such as Osiris, the foremost god of the dead, and Anubis, the god of embalming. The Middle Kingdom was a time of religious change. The pyramid texts of the Old Kingdom became what Egyptologists call the coffin texts. The coffin texts link the Old Kingdom pyramid texts to the New Kingdom Book of the Dead and are an expression of the Egyptian desire for immortality. Like the pyramid texts that went before them, the coffin texts contain many astronomical references and statements about the cycles of the celestial bodies of the sun and the moon. But unlike the pyramid texts, their emphasis shifts towards rebirth through the divine earth, in the form of the body of Osiris, and restoration via sacred water. Middle Kingdom coffins from Deir el Bursha, in the 15th Nome of Upper Egypt, differ from those discovered at Meir. There the route to the afterlife becomes two zigzagging paths known as the Book of the Two Ways. On the Deir el Bursha coffins, the goddess Nut or the sky is painted on the inside of the lid, and the Book of Two Ways is painted on the floor. Bodies were typically buried with the head to the north, and the face facing east, directly behind the pair of wadjet eyes painted on the side of the coffin. At the foot, the spell is usually to get basking the god of the earth to place his arms around the deceased, illuminate their faces, and open their eyes. At the head, the spell is addressed to the sky goddess Nut. On the inside, the goddess Nut, says that she has placed Isis and Nephthys under the deceased's head and feet. And, on the bottom of the coffin, the deceased implores not to raise him up. On the coffins from Maya in the 14th Nome, the goddess Hathor takes the place of Nut. Most of the nomarchs, the local elite rulers buried there, and their family members, held positions relating to the service of the goddess. Indeed, 
Many of the nomarchs held the title Overseer of Prophets of Hathor or Priest of Hathor, and many of the elite women had the title Priestess of Hathor. In addition to these titles, there are also depictions of ceremonies relating to Hathor and the reliefs on the walls. The inscriptions on these Middle Kingdom, wooden coffins, give us an insight into the magical afterlife functions of the caskets. The most fundamental of these was the provision of new life and sustenance for the deceased. The long inscriptions on the sides of the coffin invoked Osiris to supply offerings to maintain the deceased in the afterlife, such as fresh linen, sandals to wear, and bread and water to eat. Isis and Nephthys are mentioned at the foot and head ends of the coffins. On the long sides, the texts place the deceased under the protection of Geb, Nut, Shu, Tefnut, and the four sons of Horus. The excavation work that began in the early 20th century continues at Maya into the present. The University of Leuven's investigation into the area began in 1988, under Professor Dr. Harker Willems, originally with Leiden University. In the 1990s, the project briefly became part of a joint effort with the University of Leiden, the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, and the Museum of Penn State University, but work stopped in 1996. In 2001, Professor Willems obtained grants that enabled him and his team to return to the project. And there have been several significant finds, in recent years. In 2007, the burial chamber of Henu, an estate manager and high-ranking official during the first intermediate period was found. Henu's mummy was wrapped in linen and placed in a large wooden coffin inscribed with offering formulae. The chamber contained a large car statue of Henu, wooden tomb models known as Shabti, representing workers making bricks, women grinding grain, a model of a boat with rowers, and a pair of full-sized wooden sandals painted white. In 2019, the team made another breakthrough. They announced that they had found the oldest copy of the Book of Two Ways on the coffin of Ang, an early Middle Kingdom woman. Unlike the bound books of modern times, the ancient text wasn't a standalone volume. Instead, excerpts were written on the inside of the sarcophagus itself, surviving in the form of two rotting cedar panels etched with images and hieroglyphs. The inscriptions clearly quote the Book of Two Ways, and other artifacts in the grave have been dated to the reign of Pharaoh Mentor Ohotep II, who ruled until 2010 BC. If you have enjoyed this short film or found it useful, don't forget to hit the like button. To ensure you never miss an episode of The Numbers of Thoth, hit the subscribe button now. We look forward to seeing you again for another deep dive into the amazing history of ancient Egypt soon.